Mrs. Lana, oh my goodness. Can you believe what I just discovered? You ate all the strawberries that I had been saving in the fridge. I mean, seriously? I was keeping those for myself. Oh dear, I must apologize. I didn't realize they were off limits. I ended up making some strawberry jam with them. I can't even begin to wrap my head around this, Mrs. Lana. Those strawberries were not your average ones. They were expensive and the best you can buy. You can only find them in selected shops and they were imported all the way from Japan. I had something special planned for them and now they're gone. Well, you see, Violet, those strawberries were starting to show signs of spoilage. I've been thinking about this for a while now, and I believe it's important to only purchase food quantities that we can consume in a timely manner. I understand that you like to savor the finer things, but it often leads to waste when they go bad. Excuse me? Did I ask for your opinions on my eating habits? I don't need to hear anything from someone who can't afford to enjoy the finer things in life. You wouldn't understand the joy of cherishing these delicacies. Are you seriously calling me poor? Ugh, this is so frustrating. I can't take this anymore. I only agreed to move in with you because Steve promised me numerous benefits. But all I've experienced is stress. And what's worse, you help yourself to the nice things I buy without even asking. On top of that, you only contribute to a small fraction of the rent. And to top it all off, you don't even appreciate your daughter-in-law, despite everything she does for you. I'm sorry, but what exactly have you done for me? I let you live with me. I graciously opened my home to you. Didn't Steve mention that he wanted us to live together before the two of you got married? That's beside the point. I can't take this anymore. I've reached my limit. I've decided that I'm done playing the role of the sweet, submissive housewife. From now on, I'm going to prioritize taking care of myself and my own needs. Have you ever really been kind to me, Violet? You claim to be a devoted housewife, always trying to impress Steve. But the truth is, I'm the one who ends up doing most of the housework while you lounge on the couch, endlessly scrolling through your phone. Shut your mouth, you peasant. Don't you dare speak to me like that. You need to keep in mind that the only reason that you have a place to live is because my husband and I are kind enough to provide for you. Steve, I need you to tell me what you told Violet to convince her to live with me. Huh? What do you mean, Mom? She just threw all of her anger at me and that this isn't what she signed up for. And that you told her that there would be benefits on her side by living with me. She even went as far to call me a peasant. And that I should be ashamed for not being able to spoil her. Violet told me that you were the one who came up with the idea to live with me. And that you convinced her to do so. So I need to know what you told her. Just come clean with it. I need to know this to straighten out this whole situation. Besides, I've been having a feeling that you're lying to me for a while now. What? I mean, you had a bunch of money inherited to you when dad died, didn't you? He worked at a decent company, so I imagine the insurance was great. Therefore, I figured that you had enough to be well off for the rest of your life. Maybe even better than well off. So I told Violet that you would support us a pretty good amount per month if we let you stay over at our place. So we had a discussion and decided that it would be best to rent the money that we need for now and have you support us to pay it back. And you tried to ask me to live with you guys without raising any suspicions by keeping something so huge from me? Wow. I remember how happy I was when Violet told me that she wanted to keep me close for when I grew old. It was all about just money, huh? You don't have to say it like that, Mom. Don't you enjoy our company? After finding out about your motives? No, I don't. You turned Violet into a cold-hearted liar. Now all she does is complain about my presence and call me poor. I should never have even bothered living with the two of you. 
So explain everything to Violet right now. That there was never a conversation about me providing for the two of you, and that you lied about it. And while you're at it, apologize and tell her that you'll single-handedly provide for her from now on. What? How did our conversation end up in that direction? You're supposed to be understanding and help us more with future payments. Why would I do that? Because Violet isn't the same girl as the girl I met either. Ever since my salary started going down, she's been constantly irritated about my presence too. Thanks to that, she and I haven't been doing so well as a couple. I can't say that I didn't notice how her behavior towards you had changed as well. Even in this situation, I believe that you would help me because you're my mother. And that's what mothers should do for their sons. But you didn't even bother offering help. And now you're trying to abandon me in this situation and leave everything in my hands? Don't you see how harsh you're being? You're my mother, so do something. Are you kidding me? How old are you? Someone your age needs to pick up their crap and finally become independent. I'm the one who should be asking you if you're kidding me right now. What kind of mother behaves like that to her son? If you're going to be so cold, then fine. I see how it is. I could kick you out of the house as soon as I want. You are going to kick me out? Even though you're the one who suggested that I live with you in the first place? If that happens, you're going to be in big trouble, aren't you? You sold our house and all of the land that you owned before moving in with us. You have nowhere to go back to, right? You don't want to become homeless at that age, do you? All you have to do to avoid that outcome is to stay in that house and keep paying your rent to us. I can't believe this. You're threatening me. I've raised my son into a monster. Come on, I'm just negotiating, mom. Besides, you still have the money that you earned by selling our old house, don't you? I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to pay a little bit of rent every month. I look forward to our business together. We couldn't have had such a nice house without you. So thank you for your support. Um, when are you going to pay rent for this month? Steve told me that you would be paying $3,000 for rent every month. Why have you still not paid us? What? $3,000? What kind of joke is that? Are you telling me that Steve lied to me again? Why does he always lie? To get out of trouble? He knows that he's going to get caught. Never mind. Then I'll just tell you myself. Steve and I will be asking for $3,000 each month for rent from now on. Are we clear? You can manage to do that, right? No, I can't. I already pay an amount that will pay well over my expenses in a month. And now you're asking for $3,000 a month? I'm only paying the same amount that I used to. $1,000 for each month is enough. I guess this means our negotiation has failed. I'll pack up your things and leave them outside. Best to gather your things and leave. Please. What? This is your last chance to change your mind. If you oblige to pay 3000 every month, then we'll let this incident slide. I won't throw you or your things out. So what's it gonna be? Are you going to pay the 3000 each month as rent? Or are you going to be homeless and spend your nights on a bench in a park? Feel free to make the choices that fit your preference, haha. <laughs> I can't believe you. You can't just kick someone out like that. As you've already figured out by now, I'm barely getting by at this point. Thanks to your dumb little son, who couldn't manage to keep his job. We don't have the option to keep another mouth to feed for free. You don't keep me around for free. I pay my part of the expenses, and you say that you don't have the option, but I don't see you getting a job either. Stop arguing with me. My job is to take care of the house. I'm not going to go out and work like a peasant, so you need to pay rent and be accountable for that. How does that make any sense? But you choose to ignore our needs and neglect your part in supporting us. Have you used up 
all of the money that you had from selling your house already? It's my money and I get to use it however I want. How selfish can you be? You use all of your money for yourself while your son and daughter-in-law are struggling to get by? I can't imagine how easy it must be to rely on someone else to live while not making any contributions whatsoever. But that ends now. If you can't pay your rent, then get out of my house this instant. So that's all I was to you, huh? You never cared about me. You just wanted to use me as an ATM. Well, then, I'm glad to leave. Shut up, you poor old hag. I mean, what else did you expect from us? The only good that you do is pay us. So I think it's fair that we only see you as an ATM. You're not worth the space in our house. You need to leave and never show up ever again. There's literally no point in letting you live with us, you parasite. I guess I'll move into the luxury nursery home with a built-in country club in the town next door. Seriously? I guess he got his habit of lying from you. I'm being serious. And where on earth do you think you're going to get the money for that? I have every single cent that I need to afford it. I currently have $2 million worth of assets. So you can probably do the math that I have enough to spend a lifetime in a nice place like that. Two million? How? I think I'll get going now. I promised my friend that we would go somewhere to have tea together. So I'll go do that. As a matter of fact, I'll stay at a friend's house tonight. So please leave my things at your front door. I'll be moving into my dream environment after that. So you won't have to see me ever again. I can't tell if you're joking. You're kidding about the two million dollars, right? Even if your husband passed away and left an inheritance? Two million dollars is unrealistic. Oh, it's not my husband's. I made it myself when I was younger. What? Yes, I bought some real estate with the money that my husband left behind. So I have five million dollars if you include that. I hit the jackpot with the apartment I bought and started renting out. You have five million dollars. How? Because I plan ahead and save up money before I make financial decisions. Unlike your dumb little husband. This whole situation doesn't make any sense. Even your son hasn't told me anything about money like that. I'm sure he'd be aware if you had assets like that. I've actually never mentioned it to him before. I sold the company that I was running at the time, as soon as he was born. So you sold your company? You're trying to tell me that you were a business owner? Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. I was a big risk taker when I was younger. I started lots of businesses and most of them failed, but one of them really took off and it expanded to a pretty good scale. I can't believe this. I married my husband right after that though. So I ended up selling the company for a pretty good dime. I found it more important to marry and devote myself to the love of my life. Therefore, I sacrificed the potential of becoming a billionaire to pursue it. How could you sell your company for a reason like that? Are you stupid? Do you think so? Because through my eyes, it seems like you and I are doing the exact same things. Quitting our jobs to become housewives. I just wanted to support my husband with everything I had. So I did exactly that. He was very kind, but he had trouble balancing his tasks. So I had to step in all of the time and I enjoyed it a lot. The money that I got was just a bonus. And that's how you got $2 million. Exactly. So that's probably why Steve never mentioned it to you. He simply only knew me as a housewife. The subject just never came up because we were all happy with the situation that I created. Honestly, my brain can't keep up with all of this. Then you can look it up on the internet tonight. The company is still pretty large in scale. I'm sure you can find my Wikipedia or something as its founder. Mom? What do you mean? You used to own a business? 
Why did you never tell me about this? And your savings? That should have been the first thing to bring up when you started living with us. Let me ask you this. Why would I have to tell you what my savings are? In fact, why should I even financially support you? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. This is my money, so I get to use it however I want. Is there some type of law that obligates me to help you out because I'm your mother? But I'm your son. Isn't helping me out when I'm struggling the normal thing to do? You don't get it, do you? I'm not going to help you, especially because you're my son. I care for you, so I need you to learn how to keep going on your own. Come on, mom. Don't be like that. Look, I'm sorry about all of the things that Violet said to you. I really am, and I'll make sure that she understands her faults too. So can you please come back and live with us? Violet is saying she'll do all the housework from now on. And I'm sure things are going to work out this time. All you need to do is support us the way you always did, and all are going to be well. Sorry, but I just finished signing up for the nursing home that I was talking about earlier. So no. I won't be moving back with the two of you anymore. What? Have you already finished signing up? I mean, I can't just stay at a friend's house forever, can I? The place I'm moving to has a whole building to itself. So I'll be spending the rest of my life shopping and sipping margaritas next to the pool. My friend even said that she's moving in with me. So we'll be having the time of our life. They own a whole building? And a country club is inside? How much is that going to cost you? You could have so much money living with us instead. I'd rather use everything I have on myself than let you two parasites steal from me. I hope you and Violet live happily alongside each other. Don't mind me anymore. This poor old hag will be living in a beautiful nursing home with everything she needs to be the happiest she could be. Mrs. Lana, what have you done? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I really don't. The neighbors. They keep staring at us like we're criminals. And when we approach them, they wouldn't even look us in the eye. It's very difficult to live comfortably when you're surrounded by people who treat you like that. And why do you suppose that I was the one who did something? Because we haven't done anything to any of them. And this all started since you left our house. Well, I'm so very sorry for the two of you. It might be because I stopped donating to the city. What do you mean? I'd actually been donating to the city for a long while now. You know, giving back to the community feels great. So I'd make large donations towards schools in this area. I also donated all of the money that was used for the furniture of the city hall. That was built up a while ago. I'd make donations like the above every year. You do all of that for people you've never even met? But you still can't pay for our house? How is that fair? Because a couple of adults should be able to account for their own expenses on their own. I lived in that city and the responsibility was partially mine. So even though I'm not strong enough to participate in volunteer activities, I contribute by using my wealth for the good. But now that I've left that town, I've stopped making those donations. It's not my responsibility anymore. What are we supposed to do now? Everyone knows that the two of us were the reason you had to leave. So everyone in the city thinks we are a nuisance? I mean, there aren't many people who are capable of making donations that scale every year. So I guess there won't be anyone to replace me. But it's none of my business anymore. And I have to go easy on spending to keep living in this environment. So all I can say is good luck. What do you mean, good luck? How are we going to keep living here? If every single person hates us, please come back to town. There's no way on earth that I will ever go back. I mean, who in their right mind would leave a living dream to go back to live with a crappy married couple? If the donations are the problem, then why don't you two just make the donations instead of me? 
It feels amazing to be able to give back to your community and be appreciated by the people at the same time. I think I've always had a thing for taking care of others. Then take care of us too, please. Why are you so cold to the two of us? Because it's my policy. I only like to take care of people who I like. Do you not like us? No. I like everyone in that city because they supported me a lot. When my husband first passed away, I had to start raising Steve alone. That's when I decided that I wanted to start making the donations. I'm proud to say that I can probably make any type of sacrifice for the people who I love. But I can't do that if I hate you, right? I don't want to pay a single cent for the two of you. You hate us that much? Your own son and his wife? Yes. Even a grandchild wouldn't convince me to bring the two of you into my life ever again. I can't believe you just said that. Boo hoo. I know it'll be tough, but I hope the two of you get up on your feet and try to make it work there. Now, I'll have my afternoon tea on the terrace with my friends. Goodbye. After that whole ordeal, let me tell you, I wasted no time. I immediately scheduled a meeting with my lawyer, and together we crafted a rock-solid will that laid out my final wishes. You know what I decided? I made it crystal clear that every single penny in my name would be donated to nonprofit organizations from all corners of the globe. Talk about making a difference. As soon as I sent out the letters notifying these incredible organizations about my intentions, something amazing happened. Steve and Violet, the dynamic duo who had been bombarding me with desperate emails, suddenly went quiet. It's like a switch had been flipped and they finally realized it was time to step up and take charge of their own lives. Can you believe it? Steve, bless his heart, decided to hit the books and buckle down on his studies. He knew that earning a certificate would be his ticket to that sought after promotion at work. I have to give credit where credit's due. He really put in the effort to better himself. And Violet? Well, she surprised us all by snagging a part-time gig at a local cafe. That's right. She's finally out there hustling and bringing in some extra dough. But here's my thing, my friend. Despite their newfound determination, it seems the city gossip mill is still churning away. People love to talk, don't they? They're whispering all sorts of not so nice things behind Steve and Violet's backs. It's a shame really, but you know what? They're not letting that get to them. They're putting on a brave face and doing their best to earn back their rightful place in the community. I genuinely hope that everything works out for them. I hope they can look back one day and feel a sense of pride in what they've achieved. Life has a funny way of throwing curveballs at us, but sometimes it's those very challenges that push us to grow and become better versions of ourselves. So here's to Steve and Violet. May they find their way and create a future they can truly be proud of. Cheers to that.